Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at generating PDFs for our Rails application. Uh, we're not going to be doing any sort of HTML generation for this one, it's just going to be turning our raw data into a PDF uh, because this is, you know, sort of a business use case that comes up a lot and uh, you haven't seen any recent tutorials covering it, so I figured I'd cover it. Uh, we're going to be using the Prawn gem for this. I don't have it open, but let me go ahead and search for it. It is the Prawn PDF gem and it's going to be on GitHub and I'll have a link to this in the video description. The basic idea is it's just a raw Ruby gem that you can use, which means you can either do a, uh, if I full screen this, you can do a gem install Prawn or you can do a bundle add Prawn, whatever floats your boat. So now we have Prawn installed. I'll go ahead and hit F11, exit out of the full screen. So if we come into our gem file, scroll down to the bottom, you can see we have gem prawn version 2.4 in here. So that looks good to me. Well, let's just start by generating a basic controller just so that we can uh, test out some of the basic bare bones functionality. For this, I'm gonna create a controller, call it pages, give it a home action, and I'll just hit enter because we do need two other actions, but we sort of wanna generate those on our own. So we can do that. Let's go ahead and type Rails S now to start the server. And then we'll come over to localhost port 3000 to check, our, check out our app. You can see it's version 7.0.3.1, but that shouldn't matter too much. And then in our config and our routes.rb, we can change this git to a root and the slash to a hash to make sure that the root of our application is the pages homepage. Inside of this pages homepage, we're gonna create two links. So I'll come into views, pages, home, and then in here, what I'll do, I'll hit control B to hide the side panel. I'm just gonna go ahead and type, uh, let's say link two, and we'll do a download for the PDF. And this will just take us to the download path, I guess. And then we can do one more and we'll say, this is a link to the uh, preview. And then in here, what we can do is say, this will take us to the preview path. So we'll have one link that just sends you straight to a download page, and then we'll have one that sends you to a page that lets you view the PDF in the browser. So to do this, we need to come into our routes. And once we're in here, what we wanna do is say, get the download, and we wanna do this to the pages controller and the download action. We'll do one more for preview, and this one will be similar. It'll just take us to pages controller and the preview action. You can then hit control B to open up the side panel, scroll up to the top, click on controllers, open up the pages controller, and then we can create those two actions real quick. So I guess the first one we can start with is just a basic download. So I'll say def download end, and then we can create one more for def preview end, and we'll save this. It'll just uh, reformat these for us. Maybe not, I guess RuboCop decided not to come to work today. And then once we're in here, we just have to create a, uh, a PDF. So we can just start by saying prawn colon colon document dot new. And then we can either create a do block here, create some parentheses, or just leave it like this. I'm just gonna leave it like this and click on download to see what happens. So you can see here, if we just click on download, we get a missing template. Now we're not trying to render HTML here. We might be if we wanted to. So you could do something like a respond to block with a format and HTML, et cetera. But in this case, we're really just trying to force a download. So in order to do that, we can actually just send some data. So we can call a function called send data. And then in here, we need to pass this prawn document. Now we could just grab this prawn document, put it in here, hit save and see what happens. I've never tried this before. So we'll just click download and it looks like it forces a download of just a regular file, I guess. So we'll save this and then let's try to open this and see what this is, but I'm pretty sure this is just gonna be uh, pretty much some noise here. I'll open it with Chrome, I guess. And it's just a prawn document with the, uh, I guess the memory address or whatever. So there's really nothing interesting there. So let's actually add some text to this. And we can either do it in line here inside the send data, but that's kind of cringe. So instead what we'll do is we'll say, create a PDF with the prawn document. And now we can take this PDF and we can add some text. So you can see here, GitHub Copilot's trying to take our jobs. It's already suggesting what we need to do. We can just call pdf.text and then pass some text. At this point, we can then take our PDF, pass it into our send data, save this, and we'll see if this works. We'll come over here, refresh, uh, we need to actually refresh on the home page, not on the download page. We'll then click download. That'll open this up. We can then save this as download in our downloads directory. 
And now if we open this, hopefully it'll open in here and then we open it in Chrome and then we click OK and three hours later, we're still getting this weird format. So the way to actually get this to work, uh, enough putzing around, we need to call pdf.render. So this will be the render method. And here you can see, of course, that GitHub Copilot's already spoiling all the fun. Uh, basically, we then need to pass in a file name. In this case, we'll just give it hello.pdf as the file name, and then we'll give it a type of application slash PDF. We can go ahead and save that, refresh the page. Now, when we go to download, it'll automatically try to download hello2.pdf because I already have one. I'm just gonna overwrite the default hello.pdf file and hit save. So now you can see this one downloaded and has the PDF icon. Maybe you can't see, maybe it's too small. But if we click on it, you can see we have an actual PDF preview here. It knows it's a file. It has the uh, PDF UI you're used to with the download button and the print button. So that's pretty neat. Now let's take a look at how we would do this uh, inline. So with our preview button. So it's gonna be largely the same logic. We can start by creating our PDF prawn document. We can then go ahead and add some text. We'll just add some text. Maybe instead of hello world, we'll do something like this is a preview. And then we can do some more text and say, it only shows up in the preview uh, route, maybe. Once we have that, we can then, uh, maybe we want to, I don't know, let's start a new page. So we'll say pdf.start new page, and then we'll do pdf.text, and this is a new page. Once we have all of that, we can then grab the same send data that we have here. We'll send the data. But in this case, we're going to add an extra little bit at the end here where we say this is a disposition with inline. And what that's going to do is allow us to be able to render this in a preview instead of forcing us to download it right away. So you can see here, we go into the preview window. We have two pages. This is the two lines of text that we wrote out here. So every time we call pdf.txt, it creates a new line. And then when we called uh, start new page, it just skips all of this and goes down to a new page. Now, the natural question that I had here when I was working on this is what happens if I just spam a whole bunch of text? Does it automatically create new pages? So I'm just going to go ahead and paste this in. It's 100.times do I, and then I just call pdf.txt. This is a line with the number in it. The reason why I'm doing this is just to see what happens if I write uh, 100 lines, if it'll create more pages. If we do this and then we refresh, you can see page one, page two, and the numbers go down to a page three. So it is automatically creating the line numbers for us. That's pretty neat. Now, of course, this is all very hard coded in a Rails app. You're gonna have some data you'd want to print out. In that case, what we can do is stop the server and we'll just generate a basic scaffold to play around with it. I'll just say Rails G scaffold. I'll generate a post scaffold, give it a title and a body with some text. And what we're actually gonna do here is we're going to do some uh, active storage. So I'm gonna say Rails, I can never remember what this is. I think it's Rails active underscore storage colon install, or it could be Rails G. Looks like that was it. I got lucky and then we'll do a rails db colon migrate command to migrate the database. So we'll add an active storage so we can add in some images. We'll then clear this, type rails s and hit F11 to start the server. I'll come back to the root of our application and then I'll hit control P and routes to go into the routes file because I forgot I already had it open. And then in the routes file, I want to add a link to have a specific PDF for each of our posts. So for this, I'll just say get posts slash PDF. And then I guess we can pass in the ID of the post. And then we can send this to a post controller PDF action. And we'll just say, do this as, uh, I don't know, post PDF, sure. So this will just give us a post PDF path that we can go to. We just, of course, have to create this actual route. Now let's come into our homepage and below the preview, we'll create one more link and this can just take us to our post path. I'll just say posts, and this will be our post path. Save that, come over here and refresh, and we can go over to posts. I'll create a new post, test with case, and we can create it. Now, I'd like to add our images. So for active storage, this is pretty simple. We just have to come over to the side panel, click on models, come down to post.rb, and then we just have to say this has one attached, and we can call this whatever we want. We can call it image, picture. I'm going to call mine thumbnail just because it's pretty, uh, 
unique what it's called so you'll see exactly where it needs to be used so the first place you do it is in the model to say it has one attached then you have to come into the post controller scroll down to the bottom and inside of the params you have to permit your thumbnail if you have multiple of course you have to do a thumbnail colon and then the array which will allow you to pass back multiple but in this case we're only going to have one so we'll just leave it as colon thumbnail so that takes care of our model and our controller. And of course, in Rails, we use an MVC framework, which means we also have views. So let's come into our posts and our form to fix up the views. For the form, it's pretty simple. We just grab something similar to this body. We paste it down here. We change this first body to a thumbnail. And then we change the second one to a thumbnail. And we change this from a text area to a file field and that'll give us our thumbnail. If you want to pass multiple back here, you just set multiple inside of your um, inside of your form. In this case, we only have the one, so we just go with this. Now, if we click on edit post, we have the option to choose a file. So I'll go ahead, I'll upload a file. Maybe I want to pick, I don't know, this lady who's looking at some code, and then I click upload. Now it's not showing up on the post page, so let's make it show up there. We can search for the underscore post.html.erb, and that's going to be inside of our views, posts, and our underscore post.html.erb file. In here, all we want to do is just create a small image tag. So we'll just say image underscore tag with some parentheses. And then we want to do the post.thumbnail. And we can give this a style where we have, I don't know, a width of 200 pixels and a height of 200 pixels maybe. Just something very basic so that it forces it to be visible on the screen. So here you can see we have that post showing up. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and let's add in the link to view the PDF. I'm going to add this into all of the partials just so that it's very clear where this link is. So inside of our underscore post, I'm going to create a link to and we'll just call this view PDF. And then this will take us to the post PDF path. Remember, this is from our route that we created earlier. This is the get post PDF ID as post PDF. So that's where this post PDF route's coming from. That does mean we still have to create it. So don't forget about that. This won't work right away, but we can just pass in our post here and then save this, refresh, and this part will work. We'll have our link, but if we click on it, it won't have an action in our post controller. So let's go make that. Come over to our post controller. And at the bottom here, we just say def PDF and then end. Okay, so this is the final stretch. We create a PDF document here. So we'll just backspace this. We'll create a PDF prawn document, just like we did last time. We then want to give this some uh, text, which will be our post.title. We can maybe, uh, let's just save this right now. We can pass in a size if we want to of like 20 and a style of bold if we would like to. And then we can do the same thing we did previously at the bottom, just so we can see this. So we can say send data. We want to call pdf.render. We want to give this a file name. And maybe instead of hello.pdf, we give it a file name of something a little bit riskier, where we say uh, at post.title.pdf. We then give it a type of application slash PDF, and we can give it a disposition of inline. So let's go ahead and save this. And then let's refresh the page. And you can see here our post isn't defined because I forgot to add in the set post up here. So our before action right now is only giving us an add post for the show, edit, update, and destroy actions. But we need a set post in the PDF action as well. So let's save that. And then we can scroll down again. Now if we refresh, we have our title. So our title is bolded. It is in a larger font size. If I change this to like, let's say 48, and I come over here and I refresh, you'll see a bigger title. So, I mean, that's neat. Maybe, maybe that's what you want. Uh, maybe you also want to have your body appear here. So you call pdf.txt with your at post.body, and then that gives you your at post.body with the case right below the test. Now, for the thumbnail image. This is a little bit weird. It doesn't seem to like any sort of URLs, but based on the GitHub issue tracker that I could find, it's because Prawn expects a string IO. So we have to actually download the image, which is a little bit weird, but the basic idea is we create a variable 
we can call this thumbnail and we set this equal to string capital s string capital i capital o dot open so string io dot open and then we call at post dot thumbnail dot download so that downloads the thumbnail into a thumbnail underscore image maybe we can call it and then we take this thumbnail image and we just call pdf dot image we pass in the thumbnail image and then optionally here github copilot suggesting a fit this is just going to be the size of your image i'm going to leave it off at first just so you can see what happens if you don't have it if we now refresh we get our image uh, but it's down here on page three and the only thing you can really see is the background of the wall because it's a very large image if we pass in the fit of 100 by 100 that'll force it to be sized to 100 units by 100 units so you can see it here as a very small image in this pdf if i change this to let's say 500 by 500 it will create a 500 by 500 version now it's not a perfect square because this is the fit method. So just keep that in mind. In this case, what fit means is it has a maximum of 500, but it will still respect the aspect ratio. If you're interested in more of what the options are, the prawn PDF uh, gem actually has a link to the manual and it's a self-documenting manual. I'll have a link to this in the video description as well. But the basic idea is this is a, uh, PDF with all of the options for prawn generated by prawn. So the very first example here is just a list of, or a description that is then itself generating the code example that is the, the description. So it's a bit, a little bit weird, uh, but basically you get your description and then you, you get your code blocks below it. So if you scroll through here, you can find everything, including images. If you come down to the images tab, you can see the sizing for the images where they have options for the width and the height, where you can see the difference between setting widths and heights to fit the container or forcing the scale or you know anything your heart really desires. And they have all of these options here in your, uh, in your documents. So this is a very nice option to have. Uh, and then, of course, if you have multiple of these, you could then take this entire PDF uh, section here and maybe apply it for your post index page. So that might be a good exercise. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully this was helpful uh, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.